fine. You know, the jockeys, brothers, a friend of mine. And just a minute, boys, I got the feedback. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Handicapper's Corner, brought to you by the Derby Bar and Grill. I'm Mike Heads, along with Drew Forrester. We're going to go through the Sunday, August the 12th, races at beautiful Hastings Race Course. Well, eight, eight races on tap. Excellent conditions again. Uh, good card. No stakes race today, but uh, we've kind of used up all our stakes races with the uh, uh, six stakes race on, on BC Cup Day. We have, yeah, but there is an allowance race that's really nice in yeah. here. We, we have to see a very talented Herbie D. Stakes horses, back. yeah. Yeah, uh, Herbie D., yeah, Three Wood. Uh, he's good horses. been knocking on the door in the uh, stakes races, and Herbie D. just turned in a sparkling performance last time. Nice to see him. Uh, back how, in action. Yeah, how he yeah. comes back for his second start of the year. However... We'll first start race. the first race, claiming 15,000 wide open for Phillies and Mares. Uh, nice competitive race. And really, For 15,000, you get some really uh, quality Mares in here. Uh, I've gone to the two lasting Spice. Uh, she's only made her second start of the year last time, and it was after a bit of a break. She uh, started uh, back in May, had a couple months off, uh, come back in July, uh, on the 12th or 28th, sorry, just a few weeks ago, and just had a huge race with uh, my Bella. They went 21 and 4, 44 and 3, and she kept kept going, kept hanging on, kept hanging on, and got beat by a very uh, a horse that's really on a roll, nicely talented, my bailout. Uh, just beat her by uh, just under two lengths. So uh, any kind of race, if she can run that kind of race back, I think she's just going to be too tough to beat. I have her on top. Uh, the second spot, uh, a horse that is eligible to beat her random highs. One at the $15,000 level, uh, went up to the 25 level and uh, ran into Dash and Daisy, uh, who's a bit of a monster at the $25,000 level. Uh, only got beat by her by two lengths. Now drops back down to 15. She should be a handful in here too. I have her in second. And in the third spot, a horse that uh, we haven't got to see a whole lot of this year, but a talented, uh, nice mare and notice her. Uh, hasn't had a whole lot of breaks this year. Uh, she was in that uh, My Bell Lasting Spice last time where the speed just kept going. Uh, maybe if the speed crumbles a little bit today, she's got a better shot at notice her. I have it for the third spot. It's uh, two, four, and one. Yeah, I see it exactly the same way. Those look like the three uh, mares in here. Lasting spice, uh, g great runner-up effort to my yeah. bailout. And if that race didn't absolutely empty her out, then I think she's got to win today. Yeah. Uh, you look at her races last year going long, they were all excellent. Uh, she can route, and uh, I think Lasting Spice is very dangerous here. The four horse random highs, how can you fault her? She's made over 30 grand this year. She hasn't yeah. been worse than second. She has seven starts with three seconds or three wins and four seconds. And uh, just it's a been machine, a gem yeah. of consistency yeah. uh, for Sylvia Gregory. And I put the one horse, uh, notice her in for third. I'm going to stretch out and go long. She hasn't been long in a, quite a while. Uh, she's been doing a lot of sprinting the last couple of years, but uh, she did win a stake. Uh, going uh, a mile on a 16th as, as a three-year-old, so perhaps uh, she can regain some of that uh, three years ago. But uh, I went two, four, and one. Definitely lasting spice is the worst to beat, though, in here. On to the second race, uh, maiden 10 grand fillies and mares going six and a half furlongs. You've got to feel the six. Uh, really looks like the one-horse mausel secret looks the best yeah. on paper. Dropped in for the, the 10 last time and got beat by Tenzel. Uh, it was pretty comfortable second that day. I just don't see anyone to jump up and beat her. Maybe the six-horse Orchids Pepper, who uh, was unfortunate not to win that day, actually yeah. was, ended up second and was disqualified for plowing into about three horses. She did have a bit of a rough trip, but it was <laughs> causing quite a rocket. Just ruckus. took off like a rocket, though, was part yeah. of the problem. Is he just had to kind of weave between horses and did cause some problems. But she was a lot of horse, is the yeah. point. And she yeah. uh, looked good that day. Uh, uh, budging her way through in between horses. So, yeah. and, and the four horse, Eliodora. Eliodora, let's put her in for third. Uh, she's had pretty sp spotty runs, uh, big spacing in between races. Uh, dropped in for 10,000 last time, was a no threat fifth, but it was her first race since May. Perhaps uh, coming back in two weeks, that may be the ticket for her. And This isn't a tough race. If she could jump up and win easy. Uh, I went one, six, and four, but uh, I think all three of them are interchangeable in here. Yeah, I, well, I agree with you. The one Mazel secret, just because she was running pretty hot. She was running the maiden special weights most of her life. They dropped her in for the maiden twenty level. She ran to Clarice B, then Talis Ridge. Then they put her in for the uh, ten thousand dollar level. She runs into Tenzel. So she just seems to keep running into pretty nice fillies. Yeah. Uh, I don't see anybody like that in here. This is probably a weaker kind of bunch for a, a maiden a ten. ten. Yeah. So uh, I have her on top. I agree with you. Orchids Pepper was just uh, made a really nice move last time. It's a shame that uh, there's a lot of body checking going on to make that move. She had to make her way through 
using any tactics. Excessive yes, force. <laughs> using oh. excessive force. So, uh, but it was a really nice turn of foot. So I have her in second. And uh, again, uh, Philly, uh, as you mentioned, that's probably got some talent. Ellie Adora. Stevie thought a lot. Not Steve Henson thought enough of her to run her in a stake first out. Uh, that was last year. She's since dropped down uh, to maiden ten. Hadn't run a long time. Probably needed the out. Now she's back. So uh, I have her in the third spot. So I, it's exactly the same as Mike. One, six, and four. And on to the third race. This is the race we were talking Feature. about. Feature really nice little eight. race. An optional 40 for three-year-olds and up. And uh, the five horse to me, not to take anything away from Threewood. He ran a, a really nice second to Taylor Sad, then dropped into one of these races, ran a second to uh, really uh, Crew Leader, leader a class old horse here. So ran into some really good horses. But Herbie D's uh, performance last time, uh, the fractions he went in going 21 and 3, 44, uh, eight and change, just you know, kept going. Fifteen one, just to tick off the track record, was just uh, sensational. Sensational. It uh, was amazing. Yeah, he hardly explains it. It was an amazing race. Anything close to that, I don't think you can catch him. Uh, I put Hockley out of the Dino uh, Condolino Spartan. I know Dino thinks this is one of the he, in the Darley package he's got uh, this year that Swift went and purchased. Yeah. They've had a lot of success. They've had some nice horses. Uh, it's a really good three year old. It's double it, one a maiden special weight. Uh, three point play. Three point play. McKinley uh, Square. Square. Uh, what was the other one they won a maiden specialty for the Frank Road? Uh, Stratify. Yeah, Stratify. Yeah. They, they, they've had a lot of success with these. I know Dino thinks this is one of the better ones they got. Right. So keep an eye on him. He's an AP Indian of a Stormcat, as all these are. Uh, they're royally bred. I expect him to make some noise in here. I don't know if he can get to Herbie D, but I did put him in the second spot. In the third spot, the always classy three wood. He's shy on the wins, but he's always right there running second right. and thirds to nice horses. I expect him to do the same again today. Five, three, four for me. Yeah, I got the same three. I just didn't put three wood in for second. Herbie D, uh, pretty impressed with the way he yeah. spit out Time Machine uh, in 44 and chain, 44 yeah. flat and, uh, and, and ran on. You look where Time Machine ran after going those fractions. You know, he'd been running those that fast already this year and still ended up seventh by 11 lengths. And here's Herbie D's And he'd been running away. in uh, Herbie D's. Was yeah, Herbie D's coming off start, work. Yeah. So hats off uh, to Rob Gilker and his wife Vicky. They did a great training really job to get job this horse, horse ready yeah. to roll. Uh, I put three, roll, three wood in for second. Uh, you know, he's just a nice horse. The reason he doesn't win because he's... He's usually overmatched. He's usually, and, yeah, running into the toughest, toughest just, horses on the ground. He's yeah. too nice to run for a price, and he's just not quite good enough to win the stakes race. Kind of a that? no man's land yeah. there, yeah. He needs some luck, and uh, but this is an allowance race that suits him to a T, but unfortunately he hooks into a Herbie D. So I've got him in for second, and Hockley, as you mentioned, uh, in for third. Uh, pretty nice horse, another uh, one out of the package that uh, Swift Thoroughbreds purchased off of Darley, and uh, they look like they've certainly got their money's worth out of that package. Uh, so uh, he looks good as well. But I went five, four, and three. On to the fourth race, $2,400 claimer for uh, three-year-olds and upwards, Colts and Gelding, six and a half furlongs is the distance, that have an up, not one run first, second, or third of the meeting. Uh, I've gone to the seven-horse Mr. Instigator, uh, no threat run going three and a half furlongs last time, but he did get a kind of a tough trip. He was hung out three and four wide throughout. Uh, probably could find his way to the front end in this race and be pretty dangerous. Mm -hmm. I think stretching out to six and a half is better for him anyway. Uh, I put the five horse Rocky Ice in for second out of the John Nance Barn, and uh, this one had a tough goal going three and a half as well. Out of that, he's another one exiting the Terrell Mia story race, but uh, his run prior to that to a fleet back after chasing those fast fractions wasn't bad. He had every reason to get a little bit tired, but uh, he looks second best to me. And I put the two horse hurry on home, might be able to take advantage of some fast fractions and come on running late, might even be able to win the money, but uh, I got him in for third. I like the seven, the five, and the two in the fourth race. I ended up putting Hurry on Home on top just because, yeah, uh, I can see it. yeah, it's his third start uh, on the year, which is always a an advantageous uh, angle. I like the horse's third start. And the horse he's been running into, he ran into Prince Intent in that 7,500, who won by six, then a Fleet Mac, one zone accord, pretty salty horses. Uh, then uh, comes back to five, gets beat by a Fleet Mac, now act, D's Victor. Again, some pretty tough horses. There's nothing like that in here, yeah. except the back class is Mr. Instigator, but I ended up putting him on top. I have Mr. Instigator in for second. Uh, just his spotty form kind of worries me. I mean, He's a four-year-old now. He's run six times in his life. Not really sure what to make of him. Uh, if he's anything near his old self, you won't catch him. Right. And in the third spot, I put Pay Daddy. Uh, been struggling, but uh, he kind of did the same show last year. It took him a while to get going. Once he did, 
he was winning, and he's a horse that likes to win at big odds, and uh, I think he can do that today. So uh, maybe not win, but I think he could be in the mix. So I have him in for third. Two, seven, and one for me. On to the fifth, Maiden 3000 for three-year-olds and up, and uh, going six and a half. And I've gone to the seven, Mr. Sandman, a horse that was finally kind of putting it together. Uh, ran long last time. Uh, it ran into uh, excess dividend, yeah. who was really tough that day. He just ran away and hid. He was kind of the best of the rest. Uh, three, almost four lengths in front of the uh, third horse. Uh, comes back, shortens up, but comes back, you know, right back to the $3,000 level. So uh, I like Mr. Sandman on top. The second spot, I have uh, GN Victor uh, out of the Rob Gilker barn. I liked him last time, and he kind of ran flat, but he had an excuse to. He's run once in his life, had a year off, come back. So uh, with the out, I think he improves. Have him for second. And the third spot, Banner Blossom. Uh, horse that's uh, starting to put it together for William Levanaway. Uh, ran into a monster in Camilchi Road last time, but won by eight uh, for Maiden Five. Drops to Maiden Three to make sure he doesn't run into anybody like yeah. that. And I think he's live in here too. So I got seven, six, and five. Yeah, I, I just don't see a lot of speed in the race. And I, I'm hoping that the six horse GN Victor can get to the head end on his own. Uh, yeah. Kind of got pressured last time and then put away down the back stretch. I thought he hung on pretty reasonably well for a horse that was buried at the quarter pole. This horse actually came back on and got fifth. So I was pretty impressed with that run considering it's just his first start of the year. I'm looking for him to get a you know some tidy fractions and uh, be very dangerous on the head end. I, I agree with your seven horse, Mr. Sandman. I put him in for third. I put the three horse, Wander About You, in for second. A yeah. uh, horse that had a wide trip last time. Looked like he might have been able to win it at the head of the lane, but hung late. But was asked to do a lot uh, after encountering that wide journey. Like, so I put him in for second and Mr. Sandman for third. But I like the six horse, Gian Victor. I just didn't see any speed in here. I think he's getting to the front. I went six, three, and seven. On to the sixth race, gets some $7,500 claimers. Uh, non is a three lifetime. Colts and Geldings here going six and a half furlongs. I'm going to the sixth, Silver Ruler. I, I just see a boatload of speed in here. I see the two, Dictatorship going, the three, yeah. Prophet Star, the four, Vimana. And uh, I see the seven horse, Dillwyn, not getting as, as cozy of a trip as he did last time. He had the rail and scooted up the inside and split horses and won the money. This time he's not... not well, he may get the same trip, but he's just going to have to work harder for it. Yeah. I just think Silver Ruler had a brutal trip, wide early, eight wide at the head of the lane. I know he got beat, didn't get beat very far, so yeah. I, I'm willing to give him another chance in a smaller field. Uh, but he should get a good, solid pace to run at. So I'm going Silver Ruler over the four of Imana, who makes his return, uh, big win at Turf Paradise uh, on the grass, going five furlongs. But obviously, uh, come out of that one a little iffy because he hasn't been seen since then. But his works are good. Uh, give him a shot, and I put the three horse Prophet Star, who's always grinding it out. He was uh, running for a little more money. He's been running for 17.5 and half of his starts this year, yeah. which explains why he hasn't gotten out of this condition. And in some of his races at the 7,500 level, he's had some excuses. So uh, I'm going to, with a better draw, maybe today's the day for him. But I like the six silver ruler. I think he gets a great pay pace. I went six, four, and three. I went with uh, Dill when a horse you mentioned. He did win this race last time. He did have a great trip. I will give you that. But he was. Uh, a non-two going into that, yep. and he's still eligible for the same condition. So I like the fact that he can get that one and come right back in pretty much the same race, face a lot of the same horses. I put him on top. Uh, the mana horse you mentioned. Yeah. I, I have the same horses below. You had Silver Rula on top of the four and three. I went the seven on top of the four and three for the reasons you mentioned. Prophet Star has been kind of a hard luck horse this year, bouncing between those two levels of the same condition. Uh, he's going to graduate one of these days. This could even be the day. He's always pretty tough in here, always knocking on the door. So it's seven, four, and three for me. And on to the seventh, uh, 7,500 claiming for three-year-olds. Straight three. Straight yeah. three-year-old boys. Although there is a girl in here, and I picked her, the seven, Diamond Dancer. Uh, done little wrong this year. She uh, won for 17.5, put her up for uh, 25. She got beat uh, fairly... Uh, Fairly handily that day, but drops her right down to claiming five for three-year-old fillies. She wins by eight, comes back, does the same show again, wins by four. They're tough to get a race, you know, for people that, you know, don't really want to run against her kind of for no, five. No, going to run against her for five or seven because you know she'd be in there again. Exactly. So they don't really want to fill it for her. So now they, she goes in against boys. I still think she's really going to be a handful in here. Uh, the buyers, the times, uh, you know, 17 and 2 for, for these kind of horses is going to be pretty salty. I put her on top. Uh, the second spot, I put a horse who's been on a roll this year, Quattro's Raider, uh, claimed by uh, Phil Hall for 10, waited the time, running back for 10, he win, 
dropped down in the non two four. He win, went to the seventy five hundred non two non three against older boys, and just missed to Dillwyn. Uh, he's definitely uh, eligible to win this. I have him in second, and the third horse, Mister Majestic, a horse who won is. Uh, Maiden for 20, very smartly. Then went up, tried Stakes Company, tried the 75 or 17 5 for older horses, uh, non 2, non 3, gets older horses a couple times. Now finds a nice cozy spot, 7,500 straight three year olds. He's in the thick of it too. I have him in for third. So it's 7, 1, and 3. Now, I, I landed on the one horse in here, Quattro's Raider. Yeah. Uh, I kind of liked his run last time against older horses. He gets in against straight three year olds. He will need some luck, you know. Gonna have, someone's going to have to go with Diamond Dancer. I don't know if yeah. Diamond Dancer will run that kind of race against the boys today. We'll see. Tough to say. But yeah. uh, I've gone to Quattro's Raider. Been in top form since being claimed. Uh, I can't fault the horse. The horse will be in good position. I'm going to. I got to take him to win it. I put the three horse Mr. Majestic in for second. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, dropping in class yeah. uh, was you know given some tough assignments after his maiden score for twenty. But he's uh, even that fifth last time has only beaten three three lengths to Lord Henry uh, and Canucks Roar and with Council. That's considerably tougher company. So uh, it's Pedro Alvarado. And perhaps Mr. Majestic might even be able to win it. And I put the five horse Pacal in for third. This horse has uh, wowed them and won seventeen and three three starts back, but. Uh, he actually didn't run that bad against With Counts. He got hung up on a pretty hot pace. Mm -hmm. uh, then they tried him long, and that didn't work for him. But one key thing with him, he's finally getting on a fast track. He's had four yeah. runs. He's kind of an odd thing. He's very high-headed and uh, kind of a bad actor in the gate and in the paddock. But uh, this horse going to get on a fast track. And maybe we haven't seen the best of him. Uh, maybe he loves the slop, and maybe that is as good as he is. But, but you can't. I, I'm gonna it'd be a nice shot. to find out. It'd be yeah. nice to find out if he's any, you know, a, a, yeah. you know, could even be better on a fast track. So uh, I'm gonna give Pacal a shot. I'm gonna leave the filly right off the ticket. I want one, three, and five. I really like uh, Quatrilles Raider to win the seventh. On to the eighth and final. Got some maiden five granders going six and a half furlongs. Uh, Colts and Geldings in here. Uh, I'm gonna go with the seven horse Andrell. Pretty impressed with the runner-up effort in a Swiss game. I just unlucky to run into a horse like that at that level. Yeah. So because uh, he took the big drop from ten in for five and uh, looked like he was going to be the boss, and he was. He beat their balance of the field pretty easily, but just uh, yeah. wasn't as good as Swiss game. But so I think Andrell with that run uh, is going to be awfully tough. I put the eight horse Dynamite in for second. I was pretty impressed with a couple of his runs this year. The last time going long. Got caught up uh, with, with the eventual favorite and, and, and a pretty nice horse. Yes, yes he's, he's trouble. trouble yeah. uh, and that was trouble for him. Uh, but his sprint run, I thought that was pretty good fourth to Puna Point in virtual time. So I'm going to give Dynamine a shot with Amadeo Perez aboard. And I put the three horse Fat Cat Diplomat, who went, who ran quite well, just missed a no more drama and a slow heat uh, with mm -hmm. Fernando aboard. He sticks with the horse, so uh, I have him in for third. Uh, not a race I love. I'm leaving out the five Jackman Road, who has some potential. This is the four Soul of Mine drops back to sprint. Uh, there's some other horses in here to you know to perhaps watch as well in the paddock, but uh, I've gone seven, eight, and three. I agree with the seven. Uh, as you say, mentioned in the Swiss, ran a Swiss game last time. A horse had been running uh, much higher down at Golden Gate. Yeah. Came in here and uh, even got some odds on Swiss game that day, and he just galloped away from him. Uh, he was the best of the rest. I like Andrell, as you mentioned, on top. I put Fat Cat Diplomat in for second. Mm -hmm. He has taken the jump from maiden three to maiden five. But uh, he, he still kind of was a, was a green horse. Uh, his first start this year for Maiden 5, he was kind of all over the track. He got out in the first turn. He was kind of everywhere. And then uh, even last time, it wasn't kind of until halfway through the race, he started to put it together and just missed. So I think he's just getting better and better. He's a horse on the improve. I have him for second spot. And a horse you just mentioned, Jackman Road. Uh, not a terrible race. It's, he was in that Andrell and Swiss game race last time. Got beat eight links. The winner went by five and a half, you know, and they were pretty spread out after that. So... Uh, I think he's got room to improve, too, yeah, in his no, second start. A, a, so uh, I like him, too. So it's uh, seven, three, and five for me. Well, that'll do it for the that'll analysis of the uh, Sunday program. We'll take a quick look. We'll just briefly recap uh, all of our selections. Uh, here come my picks. Uh, back in race number one, I started off with the two. Uh, Lasting Spice, I went two, four, and one. Second race, I went to the one, Mazel Secret. I went one, six, and four. In the third race, I went to the five, Herbie D. I went five, four, and three. Fourth race, number seven, Mr. Instigator. I went seven, five, and two. In the fifth race, I went to the six, GN Victor. I went six, three, and seven. In the sixth race, number six, Silver Ruler. Hopefully a bit of an upset. Six, four, and three. Seventh race, number one, Quattrilles Raider. Went one, three, and five. And in the eighth and final, I went to the seven horse, Andrell. I went seven, eight, and three. 
And on to my picks, there we go. In the first race, actually I agree with Mike in the first three. The first race I got two, Lasting Spice over the four and one. The second race, the one, Mazel's Secret over the six and four. And in the third race, the very fast, Herbie D, number five, over the three and four. In the fourth race, I went with the two, Hurry On Home, over the seven and one. The fifth race, I went with the seven, Mr. Sandman, over the six and five. In the sixth race, I went with the seven, Dilwyn, with four and three. In the seventh race, I went with the girl, number seven, Diamond Dancer. I got a lot of sevens. You in got there. a streak of them. Streak there. of sevens. Sevens. Look at all that. Diamond orange. Dancer over the one and three. And in the last, the seven again, Andrell, over the three and the five. Lucky number seven. Oh, that's what we hope. All right, thanks everyone for tuning in to Handicapper's Corner. Don't forget, if you can't make it out to Hastings Race Course, get down right here to the Derby Bar and Grill. Great food specials, great food all the time. Lots of simulcast wagering, and of course you can watch Hastings right here at the Derby Bar and Grill, 176 and 0 Avenue. So come on out, great staff, uh, great atmosphere if you can't make it out to Hastings. All right, that'll do it for this edition of Handicapper's Corner. I uh, wish everyone lots of luck throughout the weekend, and we look forward to seeing you next time here on Handicapper's Corner horse can do if he says the horse can do can do can do i can give valentine because on the morning line the guy's got him bigger than five to nine but make it effort